Hi everyone and welcome to the Industry Insiders podcast, the show brought to you by Edinburgh College which gives expert advice and inspiration whatever your career goal. Hi, I'm Heather and this episode is all about beauty. The beauty industry is increasing thanks to the growth of wellness and personal self-care and the UK health and beauty market is set to reach a whopping £27 billion in the next three years. Skincare is a hot growth area and is anticipated to increase by over 27% by 2020 thanks to product and treatment innovation by companies like Elemis. Elemis is a leading UK skincare brand who are located in salons and spas up and down the country. They create innovative skincare products and spa treatments focusing on groundbreaking formulas and treatments that are experienced by over 6.5 million people every year across the world. Our industry insider today is Arlene Huggan, the area manager for Elemis in Scotland. Arlene has been working in the spa industry for 13 years. She worked as a spa manager at Elemis for six years before moving into her current role just over a year ago. Arlene says skincare is her main passion and we're so excited to have her with her on the podcast and to find out what it takes to get into the beauty, spa and wellness industry. Thanks so much for joining us in this episode, Arlene. Thank you very much for, for having me along. Great. It's great. So first of all, we want to hear from about your experience in the beauty and spa industry. So what did you study and how did you eventually start working for Elemis? I was actually quite late. I was actually quite an adult what the class is a mature student when oh, okay. I led because when I decided I wanted to be a beauty therapist at school it wasn't a career choice then okay. people didn't see it as a career mm-hmm. but because I in my head that's what I wanted to do I just kind of kept it in the back burner and then when I turned 21 decided nope I'm going to do it mm-hmm. applied um, to do beauty care because I wanted to be a nail technician okay so did my first year where I was doing all the, the kind of more nail waxing kind of makeup y things mm-hmm. and then kind of thought you know what I quite like doing the, the facials more um, sad stuff yeah mm-hmm. and it's like right let me see what can do let's go on to the next um the le- next level which was HND mm-hmm. um so I had two years HND where I was learning more massage techniques reflexology and own therapy more in depth facials and I thought no this is me. Worked um, at a spa part time while mm-hmm. I was finishing my last year of my HND. Ah. So I learned so much there, so so much. Um, and then quickly, once I um, qualified, I was quickly kind of pushed on to senior therapist role, which wow. was amazing. Quick. <laughs> yeah, very quick. So yeah, just kind of put my head down, get got working, loved my job, which I think helped. Mm-hmm. Um, working in a hotel environment as well, where you're you're dealing with different different levels of kind of customers, different types of customers every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, progressed into manager quite quickly as well. Um, and yeah, worked as manager for a, a good few years and kind of restocked my life and thought, right, where did, where, where did I want to go when I was at college? Go, went mm-hmm. back to my, my younger me. And um, yeah, just thought, no, skincare was my thing. So I had quite a good relationship with LMS because I um, was quite a strong retailer, so the company recognised me. Okay. Um, seen my name come up on boards. Working for a big um, hotel hotel chain as well, I was quite, you know, they, they were quite intrigued by um, our performances. So mm-hmm. when a role came up, they were pretty much like, hey, "You've got a job. Would you like to apply?" And I'm like, um, "Right, yes." Amazing. Um, just pretty ma- made myself known to them and made myself mm-hmm. kind of. That I, I loved the brand and want, that's where I wanted to be. So mm. eventually they did kind of say, yeah, we've got a little job. Would you like to Perfect apply? Perfect for you. <laughs> yeah. So obviously I had to apply for the position. It wasn't just a kind of walk in. But yeah, yeah it was it was fantastic opportunity. It was fantastic even to be offered the chance to apply. Mm-hmm. But to get it was fantastic. Great. So, yeah. So you said you started, so you went to college at about 21. So yeah. what did you do in the kind of interim when you left school? I worked in a shoe shop. Ah, okay. So oh, I worked in a shoe shop for about well, since I was sixteen, mm-hmm. and uh, my manager there was probably one of the most influential managers um, I had. Um, mm-hmm. through my, she kind of taught me customer service. Okay, it was all about customer service. Um, so I learned a lot about 
you know, how to deal with different customers before I went into the hotel, which I think helped me okay. kind, of kind of set you up a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So while you were working at the shoe shop, you were still had in the back of your mind about yeah. beauty and style? Yeah. yeah, I still had it there. Yeah. still was like, how am I going to get into this? How am I going to afford it? More mm-hmm. of the thing as well, because I had my own home. and How am I going to afford this? But just bit the bullet and just did yeah. it. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Great. Here I am now. <laughs> so, what is it like to work in the beauty and stat industry? It is good. It's hard. It's mm-hmm. tough. It can be tough, um, but very rewarding. Um, really, really, you meet, as I keep saying, you know, a lot of different characters, a lot of different people, um, come across a lot of different situations. Long hours can be depending on what route you go down. Mm-hmm. It can be long hours, but you know, at the end of the day, when you come home and you know that you've made people feel good about themselves, mm-hmm. it's it's fantastic, it's really rewarding. And as discussed with my career path there, it just shows you, you know, if you work hard, you can step up quite quickly and get to where you want to yeah. be. Got to so, prove yourself. Yes. Right? So can you tell us a little bit more about Elemis and how they work with colleges then? Yeah, I mean, we um, feel it's quite important for students to have quite a knowledge of a, a, an industry-led um, kind of brand. So when they qualify, you know, employers will look for that, you know, background of a, a, a brand. Okay. And they'll think, oh, you know, they've got a little touch of Elemis behind them, let's let's look at them a little mm-hmm. bit more um, and then develop them. So yeah, what we, we kind of do is we invest time in um, your lecturers. Mm-hmm. So we come in and train your lecturers in our Elmish treatments yeah. who then pass that knowledge on to the students. Okay. Um, we've touched on doing a couple of events as well for the college where I'll come in and do some, um, you know, get involved with the students, help them um, do events because that will be a big part of their career as well, especially yeah. if they stay in spa and salon. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just kind of keeping that commitment, letting them know there's there's big brands out there that they can train in, and it does make them more employable. Mm-hmm. If so it's what that. employers are looking for on a CV. Definitely. If you have got Elemis on there, it's a good advantage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you pick up a CV and you have the likes of Declu or um, Elemis. You know, on on your CV that you've trained at college and you trained with Elemis. Mm-hmm. You know, as a spa manager, I would be like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Let's have a wee word with her. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, tell us a little bit more about your job then. So, you said you started off as being a therapist yeah. and kind of moved up the ranks into management. So, what's your job like now, and what does your typical week look like if you have one? <laughs> I actually don't have a typical week. <laughs> okay. It can be so random. Um, it can go from sitting here with you guys mm-hmm. to um, being up in the Highlands driving through fields with sheep, getting lost. <laughs> okay. you know, it, it can be so different. Um, but basically, my um, job is kind of a split job. So, I'm an area manager, but I also um, manage events for Scotland okay. for, for Elemis. So my typical week could probably be go from this week for example, I'll be going around a lot of meetings, meeting um, existing businesses with Elemis, showing mm-hmm. them our new superfood range, Okay. Um, you know, explaining all the new products. Tomorrow I'm going to be with one of our um, one of the bigger groups that um, supply Elemis and we're doing a roadshow for them. So all the therapists okay that work for this company will be with us for the day and wow. um, one of the, the salon spa sales trainers is mm. coming up to, to do that. Brilliant. Um, and then at the end of the week I've got a couple of days where I'm actually going into salons and spas and doing facials for them and educating clients. Oh nice. So yeah, um, whether that's down in the central belt or up in the highlands, mm-hmm. um, but it's the whole of Scotland yeah. that I kind of cover. So. so you still get to work with customers then, you still get to do yes, treatments? That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing for me because okay. I still love hands-on doing treatments. Yeah. So yeah. Good. Um, so how long would you say it takes to train to, to be in the beauty industry? How long was your training? My training was three years. I okay. did one year as um, old school beauty care it was called, mm-hmm. um, NQ Beauty Care, which was a year you could then leave and be a beautician. Mm-hmm. And then you could stay on and do your two years, which was HND, um, 
to get that qualification with your spa therapy side of things, your yeah. reflexology, and um, learn a bit more about the basics that you learn in your beauty care course. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe now to finish up in, in your HND takes about four years. Yeah. So it's um, it is a long course, but it's beneficial mm-hmm. rather than learning everything in one go. I think it really does help to to spread that out and mm-hmm. and learn. They're learning more now, more technologies and things now than what we did when we were at college. Yeah. So they okay. need that that extra time mm-hmm. to make sure they're experts before they mm-hmm. they hit the salons and spas. Yeah. I think it's maybe a bit of a misperception is that, you know, it only takes a year or two years. Mm-hmm. But actually the people that are out there in spas have done, you know, several years of training yeah. are always learning more as well yeah. it does take time i always remember a gentleman being shocked when i was in the spa asking me what qualification i had and when i told mm-hmm. him i had an hnd he was gobsmacked really you know he was gobsmacked he said that's that's like a level below a degree you know and i went <laughs> yeah and he's like wow he says i didn't realize that you girls and guys now as well mm-hmm. um, actually um do so much training and like yeah it's not a case of just going to learn to file some nails you actually no. had to learn in depth about the muscles the bones the skin mm-hmm. you learned so much so yeah. he was shocked it's almost we, like virgin on science almost isn't yeah, it yeah i mean yeah. i remember looking at my schedule and it had in it you know at college physics i'm like physics <laughs> do I need physics you know and um, but no i now understand why we needed to to kind of do that course when you see all the electrical equipment in front of you now you need to know how the currents work you know, yeah um what they're what they're doing for the skin and mm-hmm. so. yeah okay um so lots of our students at edinburgh college go on to start their own businesses once mm-hmm. they've graduated whether that's a salon on a high street or a home business and um, to fit around commitments can you tell us a little bit more about um, the career options that you can have after you've studied um, beauty or a spa course at college there is so much. Yeah. There is so much opportunity out there now compared to when I qualified. I mean, mm-hmm. you can go down any path. You choose whether you wish to stay in makeup artistry. And mm-hmm. I've got a friend who um, works in stage makeup now oh, okay. um, that I'm trained with. Wow. I've got a couple of um, friends that are trained with who have their own businesses. Mm-hmm. One on cruise ships. Oh, okay. I've got one managing a spa out in Australia. Oh wow! Um, That's but you can go on and do so much. Like myself, just go and be a spa therapist, work your way up into work with a, a brand in the industry. You can go on then and further and be like the the, the lecturers here. You know, mm-hmm. after a few years, you've learned. You want to pass on that knowledge to mm-hmm. others. You can then be a trainer for, um, you know, a specific company like Elemis. You can also work on the cruise ships, which mm-hmm. is um, fantastic for, for young therapists to, to get that experience of training on the, the cruise ships. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Quite a big thing for Elemis, isn't it, on cruise ships? Yeah, hard work, very hard mm-hmm. work. I mean, you can be working six days a week, 12 hours a day, mm-hmm. um, but the therapists that I've met that have came off the ships keep going back on for another contract because they say it's a fantastic life and they learn so much. Okay. And they are stronger therapists at the end of it as well. Right. Virgin Airlines had in-flight therapists for a while. That was something I wanted to kind of do, but oh, then wow. for some reason they were all grounded. But I believe there is still some airlines who offer that mm-hmm. that service. Um, there's so much you can work on a beauty counter, mm-hmm. develop your own skincare. Yeah, there's loads. So many options. It's yeah. good to know because you know typically people would maybe just say, "Oh, you just go into a salon and you do nails." Someone that doesn't know the industry, but there is so much choice now. So many options. You can you know, go down one path and then maybe reconsider yeah. and do something different. I know a couple of girls as well that have also went on to go and do their nursing qualification to administer Botox, ah, things okay. like that as well. So yeah, there's, more there's, advanced treatments. Yeah, there's right. that opportunity. Okay, awesome. interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so thinking about, uh, you know, our students that will be going into the, um, into the beauty and spa industry soon, what kind of characteristics do you think someone needs to work in um, the industry? You need to be quite f- flexible personality-wise and, you okay. know, again, adapting to the client that's in front of you. You really need to be quite calm person, mm-hmm. um, very patient. Okay. Very <laughs> patient when sometimes you've got, you know, clients coming in who want to tell you their life story when you're doing their consultation, but you know you want to get them on the bed to do their, their treatment. Yeah. You know, um, you've got to be quite patient, but quite firm as well with them, guide them. 
very focused, um, very approachable as well, mm-hmm. um, is one thing. You know, you'll know yourself if you've ever been for a treatment. You know, the, the, the first point of contact with that therapist, and yeah. she's nice and cheery, just automatically just um, sets your mind into, I'm going to relax, I'm going to enjoy this. Mm-hmm. So very friendly, very professional also, mm-hmm. because you do come across some situations that um, may be a bit something that you've maybe not experienced, you may be inclined mm-hmm. to laugh or cry or mm-hmm. get angry, but you need to be able to channel that and um, deal with the situation very professionally and okay. keep it to yourself and, mm-hmm. you know, not gossip about what's just happened in the treatment room, you yeah. need to remain professional. Okay, and office. is that something that, you know, students will learn through work, yeah. like working at college and studying? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it comes quite natural as well as therapists, you kind of, tend to be able to read your clients and what you can say to them, what you can't say to them. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, And so you you obviously work with a lot with our kind of teaching staff to make sure they're trained and then they're training our students in the best way as well. But once you get out into the industry and you're working in a salon or a spa environment, is there any further training you need to do or is that kind of it? Yeah, no, you keep going. You okay. keep going. Even after 20 years, 25 years, you'll still be training. Once you qualify as a therapist, if you're then looking to work in a salon and spa, you will then learn more brand um, training. You'll get more okay. brand training. So if you're going into a salon who supplies the likes of um, Creative Nails, you would need to learn their techniques. Right. The likes of Elemis. Um, if you're selling or spa, you're going into supplies Elemis, you will then do um, a further two weeks training to learn our face and eyes for maybe what they've not learned at college. Right. Um, and then they'll go on and learn our hot stones, our deep tissue massage, our mm-hmm. pregnancy massage. But it doesn't always come in that two week space, you know, it can be spread out so you've got a chance to absorb what you've learned okay. and move on. Right. Um, and there's, there, you're always learning. I just registered to do a course on Reiki. Oh, so wow. you're, you're always learning. Mm-hmm. Always yeah, you've got learning. to keep ahead of everything. Yeah. Um, and what do you think the most important thing is to focus on when you're studying? I think, first of all, the knowledge. Mm-hmm. You really need to know your stuff. Mm -hmm. you really need to listen to those lecturers who you feel like are going on and on and on about things that won't be relevant but they will be relevant yeah you really need to focus on all the information they're giving you and then when you go out and to start doing your treatments on your your clients you then need to have that customer service Mm -hmm. but still be open to learning um, as your lecturers are walking by mm-hmm. kind of monitoring. So you have to go from being very student mm-hmm. to being very hands-on, I'm a therapist. Yeah. But being you mindful of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I would say, first of all, just when you're in a classroom environment, absorb as much information as you can mm-hmm. and then twist it into a customer service role when okay. you're starting to face your, your clients. Great. Um, so I know that LMS will bring out new product ranges all the time and it's always evolving and new technologies and things like that and I mean I think you mentioned the superfood one that's yeah. out just now yeah. so what do you think the biggest changes that you think will happen to the industry in the next few years? I think it's going to flip at the moment mm-hmm. it's all about nails, lashes, Tans, very beauty. Very yeah. beauty. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to take a flip okay. from the pattern of what we are researching at the moment is that um, millennials are actually really now starting to think about what they're putting onto their skin and into their skin and into their bodies. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think once those um, millennials hit their kind of late 30s, 40s, it's going to take a flip and they won't be as interested and they'll pass this on for the generation we can see that there's going to be a change mm-hmm. people want things quicker so it is going to be a lot more technology based as well the likes of our biotech yeah. um, machine is going to be um, one of the things that every salon is going to have eventually I think mm-hmm. because the demand is going to be there for quick results Okay. but people are I think going to start to step away from your Botox and things and start to come into more natural, they're very conscious of what they're putting into their body and onto their skin. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm kind of More kind of well-being inside yes, of things, definitely right? definitely well-being. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and what is the best piece of advice that someone's given you during your career? You've obviously been in, you know, hotel environments, yeah. now working with brand, uh, you know, studying as well. So is there a bit of advice that you would 
can I take with you? Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a lecturer, my first ever lecturer was so influential on me as well. She, she um, always said to me, never be starstruck. Okay. And I was like, okay, what does that mean exactly? And mm-hmm. she worked in quite a prestige spa where she was dealing with a lot of celebrities. And mm-hmm. she always said, you know, it doesn't matter who comes in front of you. Mm-hmm. You know, it can be the president of the USA. It can be whoever. But even if it's Mrs. Jones down the street, you treat them exactly the same. Okay. And that is what I stand by completely. Oh, it wouldn't great. matter to me who comes into the room. They would get the same quality of service, mm-hmm. um, which was um, the best, one of the best things she could have said. Mm-hmm. Um, still waiting on George Clooney walking through the door, but <laughs> you never know. You never know. It, can it happen. might happen. <laughs> um, and the other one was to learn from another company before opening up your own salon. Okay. Oh, um, great Because there's so much you can actually learn from another company. Mm-hmm. They can develop you in so many ways. Um, whereas if you jump right into opening up your own salon, you're going to make mistakes, which mm-hmm. could um, damage your business. Whereas okay. make those mistakes while you're under someone else's watch mm-hmm. and they can then help correct and put you in the right path. Mm-hmm. So that was another okay. piece of advice that was Almost like finding a mentor first yeah, that can kind of teach you much. the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn, mis- you know, make mistakes where someone can help you mm-hmm. change what you're doing wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what's the most challenging thing you'd say about your job? Can be the travelling. Mm-hmm. Travelling. Loads of miles to cover. <laughs> lots of miles, lots of miles. Um, that can be quite tough, you know, making sure you're you're meeting your, your clients on time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it gets, it, especially if you're sitting in traffic and you know you've got to be somewhere, that's, yeah. I would say, the toughest part. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of it's pretty enjoyable. Good. Good to hear. Um, and following on from that, actually, um, what's the most rewarding thing about your job? I think it's actually seen people getting quite excited about what you've just shown them or told them mm-hmm. or when you've had, you know, when I'm doing a day when I'm doing treatments is someone coming up and hugging you and saying, oh my God, you've made me feel amazing. Oh, you know, that is, it, it's fantastic. But seeing when, when you're going in and showing new products to people and them getting like, just as excited as you are, mm-hmm. it's quite, it's quite good. Oh, good feeling. Okay, so we're going to move on to some questions from our students now. Okay. So our um, hair and beauty students, well beauty and spa therapy students have been in touch um, with some questions to mm-hmm. ask you. So what was the inspiration behind Elemis? Elemis was actually launched about 29 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're nearly getting 30. Big <laughs> birthday. Uh, yeah, um, by, we had some co-founders, uh, Noella Gabrielle and Aurel Frank, who um, founded the company based on aromatherapy. Okay. Kind of thing. So right. Noella actually um, travelled the world training um, people in different techniques, different massages, and she actually uh, picked up all her techniques that she developed and ingredients that she came across all over the world and, and put together um, Elemis. Right. Wow. So that's how it started. Mm-hmm. She was teaching treatments that, you know, re- Herself still hands on until recently. She's still very involved in the company. I just met her a few weeks ago. Oh wow! Still very involved. Mm-hmm. Um, still likes to put our, you know, our our kind of our bit in on how to develop a new product. What what she thinks is going to be the, the next best thing. She's very involved. Okay. So yeah, we kind of started on the the whole um, aromatherapy principle. Mm-hmm. Our first of the ever product was. Um, milk bath which was made of oats and milk proteins for yeah. babies and very dry skin and then mm-hmm. moved on from from there okay. so yeah that was the it's nice to hear that you know Noella is so involved still oh, she yeah. cares so much about she does. where she it does. started she's very she's very inspirational mm-hmm. she's an inspirational woman oh, she great. really is <laughs> yeah um so what do Elemis pride themselves on we pride ourselves on kind of trying to keep things as natural as possible mm-hmm. and ever evolving. We're okay. always one step ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to be, we want to be the pioneers. We want to be the ones that are in front. Mm-hmm. We're against animal cruelty massively and we're also um, into sustaining, sustainability. So, um, you know, kind of helping to manage the um, the ingredients, you know, not just taking everything that we want out of it. We actually, if there's something that we want, we will try and synthetically make it mm-hmm. um, rather than take all the seaweed out. You know, we use okay. up to 19 different seaweeds throughout the whole range. So if we were to take all that out of the sea, 
Yeah. We wouldn't be left with much. So we're all about trying to sustain um, our chia seeds, for example, is all we get from Mexico, so from a, a farming village out in Mexico. So mm-hmm. we're kind of giving back to the community. So we try and. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Ethical. Yes, ethical. Yeah. Ethical is the word. Yeah. <laughs> um, so some of our students are obviously being trained in LMS practices yeah. and by lecturers and things like that, but they've also asked, how do you become an LMS trainer? Um, I would say get yourself onto like a little training course. Mm-hmm. It used to be called um, Petals. I don't know the, the it's now changed, but mm-hmm. just to kind of get that background okay. um, of of you know how to train through okay. um, a treatment because it's not necessarily that we will take someone with you know say oh we like you mm-hmm. it's not just that, the knowledge it's yeah the, to have that um, background our current trainer for Scotland for example actually started out on ships she was on cruise ships right okay. and then was working in department stores mm-hmm. um, and has that training background and now trains the whole of Scotland and mm-hmm. international as well wow. so she can be pulled out to Miami to do um, some training so yeah that's the, the probably the best path and to kind of go onto our website and register your interest mm-hmm. as a, a role mm-hmm. but a role in the, the kind of training side of things okay great um they've also said you know obviously the products are at the higher end of the price scale compared to other high street brands that you'd kind of see um you'd see in kind of shopping centers mm-hmm. and stuff you kind of already spoken about ingredients and stuff i'm taking it is that you know yeah. big factor reason? yeah big factor we use the highest quality of ingredients mm-hmm. so you know our lavender is actually growing down in in the uk so we we try and grow as much in the uk as possible so our lavender still growing down kind of bristol way okay um but we use the highest quality so we're using the highest um distilled essential oils and not once it's came down the level so we want our products to to work mm-hmm. um quickly yeah so with that comes the the high quality ingredients mm-hmm. um and we are um focusing on a lot of different delivery technologies as well so how our products are delivered so for example just now in our overnight matrix we have drone peptide technology wow so it's um you know kind of creating waves across the, the whole skincare industry and it's all about delivering that product quickly and effectively to where it's needed and mm-hmm. not so we're investing a lot of you know our our um, kind of profits and things go into what we're going to develop in the future mm-hmm. okay. um, and the likes of our Bittina Bavonica which is our, our seaweed that comes throughout the whole Trocalgian range you know obviously it's um, not just a seaweed that you would find on the beach it's yeah. something special very specific. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. So it makes sure that they're cool. Yeah, and we're products. more on the kind of luxury end of the scale as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, results driven. Mm-hmm. Very results driven. Worth the money. Then. So you've spoken about a few products while we've been chatting, but what is your favourite Elemis product? I can answer that very easily. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody who meets me will know that I'm in love with the peptide for night recovery. Okay. It keeps me on. Ah, okay. So, so tell us a little bit more about it. That is, um, you might end up wanting some after this. I know. <laughs> I think but, I will. Um, it was one of our um, products we developed in 2017 to kind of combat the effects of lack of sleep. Okay. Um, because people in my age group, like 20s, 30s, are, we are in jobs where they could be quite, quite stressful, so we're mm-hmm. maybe not sleeping great, or you're losing sleep through having kids, or okay. you know something on your mind. The high energy vi- visible light, the blue light, which comes off mobile phones and laptops, is actually switching your skin off. So while you're resting, mm-hmm. your body's resting, your skin should be active and repairing and detoxifying, but it's not. Wow. So when you wake up in the morning, you look tired, you look grey, you look dull, you look miserable. So the peptide 4 is all about switching that skin back on while you're sleeping. So you're getting that detoxification process. Mm-hmm. You're getting that rested. Your skin's then switching on and doing what it should be doing okay. while you're sleeping. So you wake up looking fresh, mm-hmm. um, younger, um, and you do look well rested. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You've sold it to me. I'm writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's my hand on heart. It's my favourite product. And anybody who knows me... Mm-hmm. Working with Elements will tell you if you say what's Alan's favourite product, they'll be able to answer. <laughs> wow, amazing! Yeah. So we're almost at the end. 
Um, so I've got one final question yeah. for you. And it is, where do you see yourself in your career in five years' time? I'd like to still be with LMS. In fact, okay. I'd love to still be with LMS. Mm -hmm. um, in what capacity? I don't know whether it's tra training mm -hmm. possibility okay. or the step above area manager, which is business manager. So yeah. looking after a chain of um, hotels or spas mm -hmm. for the company as well. So something like that I'd like to do. Okay. But definitely still be with the company because it's... My dream, dream job. Yeah. So, oh, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Arlene. It's been a pleasure thank to have you. Me. And thank you everyone for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and found it useful. Um, and tune into our next podcast episode to find out what industry we'll be exploring next time. Thanks.